laying some cable uh, just like they would on the moon for all the power requirements mm -hmm. and I think that that's you can you don't see anybody driving it so that's entirely robotic okay so we might get to talk to those folks and then of course out over in that direction is where the old Apollo stuff was done they used to actually have a lunar habitat but then just beyond that ridge is where they're doing all the spacesuit testing which hopefully we'll get to talk to some people about that so it should be pretty cool I think I heard that they're going to be actually be able to control the, uh, the the instructions and the movement and the power going through the power cable from uh, the Johnson Space Center. That's what I heard. I think they might be right. And it's, it's interesting because, I mean, obviously you don't think about that now. Yeah, Frank's actually is making a good point there. There was some teleoperating done. Well, welcome to NASA Edge. Oh, and inside an outside look at all things NASA. Yes, and we're going to do a special show today on the lunar architecture, which is great because uh, Franklin and I went out on assignment. Right. And now I'm an insider. I've logged. Well, who, who, who let you go out on assignment? Well, I mean, it, that's immaterial. The fact is I've logged more uh, hours on the simulated lunar surface uh, than you have in Swiss Franklin. We went out together. Hey, not only did he log the hours, he actually logged them inside of a, a simulated spacesuit. Yeah. Well, that's it cool. Was it was very serious suit. It was, it was very serious suit. Yeah. Uh, the the accessory. <laughs> who, who, gave you, who gave you the opportunity to do that? Uh, thank you for the opportunity, okay. but but uh, I am now a, a closely approaching uh, mega insider status. I'm Approaching? Well, a, we'll yes. have to see. Okay. We'll have to, okay. But, but let's uh, get to where we're going, okay. because before that, we've got two really important guests about the lunar architecture here in studio today, IS. We've got Jeff Yoder. From NASA headquarters. And he's going to give us the... Um, big picture. The big picture. And then we've got Pat Troutman. Who's the cool engineer from NASA cool. Langley. And who's going to give us nuts and bolts. So it's going to be so very good. So we're actually going to break it down and actually look at the details and, of the lunar architecture. And then we'll go see how Franklin and I did out in the desert in Arizona with the desert rats. Yeah, and, and now we'll... Kind of, I'll kind of critique you on how okay. well you guys did That's on your fine. own for the first time. I look forward to it. Hopefully, Franklin, you kept him in line when you're out there. And Blair uh, took control and did his own thing. You, you'll see. Okay, That's good. It's, well, it's let's good. take a break. Yes, uh, you're watching NASA Edge. An inside and outside look at all things NASA. It's going to work. You're, you're going to be very impressed. Man, you, you, you got to see the segment. It's going to be great. <laughs> cool. Welcome back to NASA Edge. An inside and outside look at all things NASA. Hey, we're here with Jeff Yoder from NASA headquarters, who's the uh, director for integration uh, for the Exploration Directorate. How you doing, Jeff? Oh, I'm doing great. It's great to be here. Great well, to have him in uh, IS. In studio. In studio. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, morning, I, I gave you a hint. You did. No, we're here today to talk about the lunar architecture, of course, to kind of share with our viewers what's going to be like when we go back to the moon by the end of the next decade. Franklin and I get this all the time when we're out talking to the public. Why are we going back to the moon? Yeah, they want to know. They're very excited, but they want to know. And why not just go on to Mars since we've been to the moon six times? Exactly. So why just bypassing just right. to, to Mars? Yep. No, those are excellent questions. So the uh, United States, NASA, and 13 other uh, space agencies got together to come up with objectives, global Hall objectives. Justice. Yes. Hall of Justice. Lunar, 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 Lunar Hall of Justice. Yeah, Lunar Hall of Justice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why we're going back, to, uh, going back to the moon. And it started with over 1,000 objectives. And they worked it down to about 180 objectives. We then put those into six, uh, six different themes, one being public engagement. We need to keep the public engaged through all of that. that, that Welcome that, to NASA, NASA Edge. Edge. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. perfect. We're on top of it. Yeah. I, 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 Doing I, our part for right. the, for the uh, return to the I moon. did my homework. Yeah, so usually you. I say science first, but scientific knowledge is, is right. one of the themes. Right. There's a tremendous amount of information to be gained uh, on the lunar surface. Uh, things like human civilization, how, how to, to live off of an, another body. Can we create our own oxygen on the lunar surface? What about water? A lot of information to be gained. It's kind of like Lewis and Clark 
going yes. across the, the yeah. states. Yeah, historical uh, explorers. Oh, exactly. And you, you mentioned Lewis and Clark. If you if you contrast that back to our Apollo era, Lewis and Clark really did the uh, uh, moving out fast with exploration, but looking at the more the high risk, uh, right. quick knowledge gain. We're going back now for the uh, the more sustained portion of exploration to right. really now capitalize what happened in the Apollo era but to uh, build things like economic expansion, to have partnerships, whether it's uh, international partnership or the commercial partnerships, to help us with this this great endeavor. So maybe there's some resources on the lunar yes. surface that we could use back at here on Earth, maybe? Yes. There are, there are uh, folks that are looking okay. at that right now. Hey, hey Jeff, oh. even a more important question for those of us on a uh, budget, when are they going to open up the coach seating to, um, to <laughs> Mars <laughs> and uh, the moon? Excellent question. Right. Well, yeah, because you did yeah. say commercial. Yeah. That's right, yeah. Well, uh, right now we have the service module that uh, we maybe could convert to uh, coach seating. Uh, <laughs> there know. you go. Hey, I'll get, take get some lunar miles I'll, out I'll of that. I'll take what lunar I can miles. get. Yeah, 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 there right. you go. A little mileage program. You know, when we talk to people and we go out, and we get some skeptics out there that are not quite really sure why we're going out there, why we're going back to the moon since we've been there six times, uh, why go on to Mars. And we actually uh, received uh, a, a message uh, from one of our Facebook friends. You know, I don't think a, a moon base is the right first step to our advancement uh, in space. He thinks that asteroid mining and colonization is a far better first step. Well, and that's a good question, and, and we have looked at uh, uh, resources. What, what could we gain on an asteroid? It's hard to do economic expansion or global partnerships on an asteroid. Right. It's a uh, smaller you get, footprint. You get more sky miles, though. Yeah. Well, more sky miles. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and it's actually more risky than putting a, a, right. a, an outpost on the lunar surface. When a meteorite had, had, had hit the lunar surface, we can now learn a lot that it, since it's close to the Earth, right. It was probably the same time when one had hit the Earth, but now it's in a pristine environment, right. so we can gain a lot of knowledge on how the Earth was created. And you know, that question was probably born out of a recent viewing of the movie Armageddon on Sci-Fi Channel, so, you know, he was typing and, okay. Yeah, yes. Well, you know, uh, Blair, you actually have a little proposal for uh, of your uh, That's right. Your own. Uh, that's right. What I'm looking at is a Shackleton Room retirement community on the moon, and um, we actually got some architects together and uh, some students and said, uh, what would that retirement community look like? And I wanted to know if I could get your opinion on these. So here's one one uh, concept. Oh, this is, this is a great concept, especially since it's one of the options we looked at uh, uh, during our studies. A little close to the mark there. That's close good. to the mark. Yeah, good. Good, good, job, good job, Blair. Yeah. See, all right, now let's, uh, concept number two. Not one that we looked at. Okay. <laughs> oh, you didn't look at, okay. It's an interesting concept. Well, this is a proprietary. Thank you, Franklin. Yeah. Can you do some speaking for me, please? Yeah, I got you right now. Thank you, sir. <laughs> but this is uh, one option. Well, this option's interesting, uh, especially since it's one we hadn't looked at. But one of the things that it does show in this option is uh, the solar powers, uh, the power cells. How difficult would it be to erect a, a you know tower set that tall there on the, uh, uh, the the moon? Well, it's actually pretty difficult. While it's while the gravity is one six g, it's still pretty high. That if you fall down, you could break your uh, your suit, your face mask, and be in be in trouble. Yeah, we're 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 not looking forward to any having any falls on the moon. That's a, even though it's a retirement community. Actually, that's <laughs> well, well, going back to the idea of using solar I've power. I've fallen and I can get up because it's only one six. Yeah, gravity. But the idea of using solar power on the moon, what about the, op the nuclear option? Initially going to the surface, a place that we do have, uh, have sunlight, allows us more flexibility. When you put that reactor down, if you're going nuclear, you're right. pretty much stuck there. Well, now, is, is it possible to come up with a hybrid situation? So you go nuclear at night, solar in the day, like, uh, like the cars now, they do. Just oh. hit a button, they just switch. Yeah, you just switch over. You don't even pay attention to it. You just, oh, I guess we're nuclear now. <laughs> Because um, it's dark out. Well, that's possible. But you, once you activate that nuclear reactor, you're not going to turn it off. That's a good point. One more option here, a um, little bit different approach. Well, you know, this this is an, inter an interesting option. Uh, as, as I look at it, having a tunnel between two different modules, it, it could help uh, reduce some EVA time. No. Igloo. Igloo. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Lunar igloo. Lunar right? igloo, yes. And before we go, I just want to see if we can give him some tips. Uh, Blair wants to become the first media nut to get to the moon by the end of the next decade. Right. And he's actually in the process of filling out an application. Yeah. Can you give him some pointers or some tips of what he could do to... to or, or a reference letter of some kind. Reference letter? That, yes. that could help. Yeah, that'd be really helpful to me, actually. Well, we could do a reference letter, but you're number two in queue. I already promised another reference oh, letter, so... Great. I'll, I'll be number five. I just always I can if I can go on the trip. He just wants to get his application on the on the on the on the top of the you know top the application. Yeah, top exactly. Of the, you know. You know. 
push a few people aside. Franklin, and get him to sign up. Hopefully, uh, not competing, because, you know, we'll go together. It'll be fun. Yeah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks, Jeff. Uh, thank you for being on the show today. And you're watching uh, NASA Edge. And inside NASA, I look at all things NASA. And thanks, Jeff. That was really good.